Hi everyone, my name is Deborah and this is the edit by DH. Today I am reviewing the new Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Divine Blushes. I always knew that Pat McGrath would be launching blushes at some point because she pretty much has everything else in her collection with the exception of blushes and a few other items like brows. So I knew it was coming, I just didn't know when. But really around this time, spring, summer is the perfect season to launch blushes because as a product, blush just instantly gives you a little bit of lift, a little bit of color, makes you look youthful, a little bit healthier, everything that we want to look. So it's the perfect timing. Please also excuse my shiny face. It's very hot today, unusually for the UK. And I've got all the windows closed because I'm filming. So if I look a little bit extra sweaty Betty, that is why. But anyway, just to explain, I've got a little bit of base on, some bronzer, some contour, and also brows and eyes. I've already applied the eyeshadow palette, but I will go through it with you guys. It is the Venus in Fleur Luxe Quad, and it's called Voyeuristic Vixen. So nice little bit of alliteration there. And the reason why I applied this first, pre-filming, was because I just didn't want to turn this into a really lengthy video. I just wanted to show you some key highlights from the collection, do some swatches, tell you my opinion, and let you make your mind up about whether you want any pieces from it. So like I said, the eyes have already been done, but I will walk you through what I think and the colors in just a moment. Let's just have a talk about the packaging. So the packaging is really nice. I mean, you know I love Pat McGrath's packaging. It sort of like pops up at the top like that. So it almost looks like, dare I say, a very fancy cigarette carton. And then when you open it up, it's the standard, classic, weighty, expensive looking Pat McGrath palette. And then that is the quad. So this is the Voyeuristic Vixen. This palette also has a mirror like most of her palettes do. And I will swatch the colors for you in just a moment. Okay, so <laughs> I was just about to tell you what colors there are. And I don't know if you can see the shadow has fallen out of its pan and onto the floor. Now, I had this feeling that it was loose and it's a faulty product, so that's really annoying. <sighs> so the pigment, as always, is stunning with Pat McGrath. It always is. I always love her eyeshadows. I've never had this sort of problem before where it's fallen out of the pan, but you can see how rich the shadows are and it's just a stunning, stunning palette. Normally, I'm not a fan of quad palettes. I don't know why, I just am not. And I, you know, I think it's harder to impress somebody with just four shadows. You know, if you have a palette, an eyeshadow palette with six, eight, ten plus shadows, you will normally find at least three, four, five shades that you really, really like and gravitate towards. However, with a four pan palette, you have to really like pretty much all the colours in order for it to be worth it, if that makes any sense at all. So normally quads, not a fan. Pat McGrath, I'm an absolute fan except for the fact that one pan fell out. I am going to contact the Pat McGrath customer service team and I will let you know what the update is on that situation. I'm hoping that they will just be generous enough to send me a new palette and not ask me to send this back because that is unnecessary hassle for the customer. So I will update you in the pinned comments down below. So now I'm going to try and do swatches. So these are the swatches of the palette. I am completely in natural light, so this is the accurate swatch with no filter. So the darkest colour is actually after dusk. So this is the only matte shade in the palette. The rest are all shimmery or glittery. The lightest shade, which is like the, almost like the highlight of the champagne-y colour, that one is called Moonlight Liaison, just there. The pinky colour, which is my favourite, that's like the predominant colour in the centre of my eye, that one is called the Rose Fire Nectar, and it's that jewel tone. And then the one that fell out, which is a shame, is the Twilight Bronze. So those are the swatches for you guys to see. 
Next, we have the Divine Blushes, the Skin Fetish Divine Blushes. And she has in total nine shades, which is a lot. So I obviously didn't want to get all nine, just a lot of money, very wasteful. So I just got two of the shades and I got the Nude Venus and the Blush Flirtatious. Again, same packaging as the eyeshadow. The Nude Venus is described as a peachy pink with a golden pearl on their website. So then if you have a look close up, that's the design. It's quite pretty with the rose. And this is what the Nude Venus looks like. So actually in the pan, it looks a lot darker than it is on the skin and it's quite a pretty color. Then the other color I got was Flirtatious, which is, I believe, the lightest shade in the collection. And this is described as a soft beige pink demi matte. But that is Flirtatious. Luckily, I have two cheeks, two very big cheeks. So I'm going to apply one shade on one side and the other on the other side. So I'll go in with Flirtatious first. So it's quite pigmented actually and I only like swiped a little bit with my brush and it picks up the colour really really well. So this is described as a demi matte meaning it's not completely matte but it's probably more matte than the nude venus that I'm about to try on. So that is flirtatious just to give you an idea and these sort of, this sort of shade is really easy to wear for someone who doesn't want a lot of colour and they almost want a subtle wash of colour on their cheeks just for that natural pick me up but obviously I think this is more of a colour for sort of like the fairer to the medium skin tones range this is really nice I like it because it looks very like fresh then going in with the nude venus it's described as a peachy pink which I would agree with it's almost, I would even go as far as saying like a coral tone, but a really nice coral, like a natural coral tone. And it just gives like a healthy flush of color to your cheeks. I can definitely see that it's got more of a sheen to it versus this side. If my skin looks glowy on camera, it's just because of my skincare underneath. But definitely this color, Nude Venus, has a glowier finish than the Flirtatious. So both have got sort of pink tones in them, but this is more coral, there's a more of a warmth to it. Whereas there's a bit of a cooler undertone with the flirtatious, it's a more subtle color. Then we have the Skin Fetish Divine Glow Highlighter. And this is exactly the same size as the blush and I think exact same packaging. Yep, exactly the same. So this is the Skin Fetish Divine Glow Highlighter. It's that sort of champagne-y colour. And actually, it's a lot nicer than I thought it would be. I was a little bit worried it might have more of an icy, silvery undertone, but it's more of a golden undertone. So this means it's more likely to work for warmer skin tones. It is still a little bit fair for, I would say, the deeper, richer skin tones, but it's, like I said, a lot more golden than I expected it to be, which is really, really nice. And I feel like golden tones work better for like a variety of skin tones rather than cooler undertones. I just wanted to also compare it quickly to the Divine Rose Skin Fetish Ultra Glow Highlighter that she previously released as part of her Divine Rose collection. This is 10 grams and I think it was 45 pounds. And this is obviously 4.6 grams, so literally half the amount for 37 pounds. So if you're looking at value, this highlighter is definitely better, the Divine Rose. I love the Divine Rose highlighter and it literally quickly made it into my top five highlighters that I use. And I just wanted to do a comparison swatch for you just to give you an idea. It's a very subtle difference. But if you look at the Divine Rose, which is this one, I feel like there's more of a dual tone to it and it's more on the pinky side, which I, I think you can see if I just sort of do that. I would say the Divine Rose highlighter is more of a complex. You can see sort of like the green in it, the pink in it, the 
almost like the purple and gold in it whereas this is more just champagne gold it's more of a simpler tone so again i will apply both for you one highlighter on one side and the other on the other side just so that you can hopefully get an idea although it might look exactly the same on camera <laughs> is definitely a dramatic highlighter for those who like drama in their highlighter. I might just put a little bit on my nose as well. I know I'm looking very shiny. This room is very, very, very warm. So that is the Divine Glow. With a different and new brush, I will apply the Divine Rose on my other side. Having looked at both highlighters, they're both dramatic, but I still slightly prefer the Divine Rose in terms of impact. I just feel like it's a more of a dramatic highlighter. As you can see, I don't know. What do you guys think? Can you tell the difference? So I'm always impressed with Pat McGrath's highlighters to be fair, but I just wanted to give you that comparison. Last but not least, I wanted to also review her Matte Trance Divine Blush Collection lipstick called Dream Lover. So this is a, I think a limited edition shade in her Matte Trance collection. You guys know how much I love the Matte Trance lipsticks. They're so creamy and matte and they're not drying for a matte lipstick. So I really love this formula. So the packaging is exactly the same as her standard packaging. And when you twist it up, that is Dream Lover. Now before I apply it, I wanted to just compare it to some of her other nudes also in the Matte Trance collection. I wanted to compare it to Peep Show and her last release which was Divine Rose. So Divine Rose is next to it and it's a cooler, more mauvey sort of tone. Whereas Dream Lover is a little bit more like browny undertone to it. Peep Show is more of a peachy nude. So you can see the different tones in all three lipsticks. So this is the Dream Lover and it's such a beautiful nude. I don't know if you guys agree, but it's just really, really creamy. One thing I always feel every time I wear the Matte Trance lipstick is just how beautifully it applies, how easily it applies. It's so easy to just define the lips as well. And normally I'm not really a fan of sort of like brownier undertones in lipsticks, but this has just got enough brown to still look quite modern still look quite fresh and it's just a very very easy nude to wear so again that is dream lover the new shade in the new collection that is divine rose and that is peep show i've deliberately added a little bit more of the nude venus blush on this side just to balance things out and i've just added a little bit more of the divine rose highlighter actually on this side just to balance things out again so overall my thoughts the eyeshadow palette you know i love pat mcgrath eyeshadows i am just so so disappointed that i had this experience of the whole pan falling out so like i said i will update you guys in the comment section down below to my pinned comments to let you know what the update is on that with customer service i think the blushes are fantastic i think she's come up with some great color choices and it'll be really interesting to see what the other shades would look like on skin i like the fact that there's no fragrance or scent to it it's got ultra fine pigments that are buildable and really it's just a beautiful finish the only one critique i have is actually the clasp where it shuts and opens so it's very secure, so that's a positive, but trying to open it, you have to push the button at the bottom to release and it's not easy. So that's the only thing. I don't know if it's just mine or if everybody experiences the same. That's the only critique. Otherwise it's a really, really stunning blush. So really love that. I think the highlighter is such a stunning color and I think it would be suitable for a lot of skin tones up to perhaps maybe an olive skin tone but still when i'm comparing to the divine rose the divine rose is still my favorite but that's just a personal preference so you might disagree with me and feel free to down below and then last but not least with the lipstick i think it's such a beautiful nude again that would just suit a variety of people you know i love the matte trance lipsticks they're some of my favorites i think with the matte trance and the lisa eldridge matte lipsticks they're some of my favorites i don't think any lipstick collection could change my mind on that as of yet 
but who knows with future collections and launches. If you have a favorite matte lipstick that you think surpasses Lisa Eldridge or Pat McGrath matte trance collection, then let me know down below. I'd be so intrigued to know what you would recommend. Last but not least, I wanted to touch upon products that were released as part of this Divine Blush collection that I didn't get. They include the Lip Fetish Balms in Divine Rose 2 and Flesh 7. And then she's also got a Lust Gloss, which is a Divine Blush collection Earth Angel, but apparently, according to my friend, it's sort of like a re-release rather than a new shade for this collection. But just wanted to make you aware of that as well. So that is it. That is the entire collection. Let me know down below what you think of this collection. Have you got any of the blush shades that I didn't get that you would love to recommend like I said I'd love to know if there's any brands that do matte lipsticks that you think is better than Pat McGrath and Lisa Eldridge which is in my eyes the holy grail for matte lipsticks let me know down below otherwise thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you on the next video take care if I can't have you I don't want you to have anyone and if you don't Something wrong with them, right? Maybe I got problems. Butterflies in my stomach, butterflies in my chest.